collector's item A mere possession that is all I am to you My collection is tragic. It's just I have an eye for... I guess it's oddball. Well, when I was a child, I had... Uh, parents were in vaudeville and I loved the humour in music. And I used to go to school fates and um, op shops and collect 78s of novelty songs, which included the uh, 78 My Canary Has Circles Under Its Eyes, which later became, you know, uh, an actual performance piece for me in the first hit that the Captain Matchbox Whoopi Band ever had. Collecting uh, things turned into, you know, uh, a musical career for me. The tragedy of my collection is is that you know it's looking a bit tacky, but I, I, at the same time I love tack, um, but also I love the bizarre and the oddball, and so I guess it's it's an oddball collection and it's a it's a very usable collection at the same time. But uh, yeah, it's it's tacky though. I, I have a, a great love for kitchen tack. When I was in Circus Oz, I taught two women fire eating, and as a present for the lessons, they gave me this beautiful circus pop-up diorama, uh, originally uh, made by Lothar Megendorfer in the 19th century, and uh, I love it. And then suddenly pop-up books found me everywhere, and I went on tour, I'd, I'd be, have a few moments to go to an op shop or at a bookshop, and I'd find these pop-up books, and for 30 years I collected pop-up books, but unfortunately I was very broke uh, a few months ago and I had to sell a lot, uh, which was very sad for me, but at the same time you could let me go of these things too. Touring is actually a great opportunity to go around and um, find things in um, out of the way places that you wouldn't expect. Every so often you come across something just absolutely magic in um, some out of the way place and it's like, you know, like finding gold. Sometimes you can wonder what's in the mind of people who devise products and toys for children. And these are skateboard figures who have actually had terrible accidents. This is bad taste at its worst and also bad taste at its best. Friends came back from the Middle East and they brought back a present for my daughters, which is an Islamic Barbie doll. And I thought, that's bizarre, a clash of cultures. I've got to have that. And I didn't want them to play it with it because they'd just mess it up. So I've got it now. We were given some uh, beautiful butter dishes, but we really had no use for them. We put them off to the op shop for a good use for somebody else to use. And that night we were watching your show and on came some beautiful butter dishes identical to the ones that were just given to the op shop. And uh, they were worth thousands, so uh, next day I rushed off back to the op shop and they were gone. Tragedy strikes again. A collector's item, that's all I am to you. Mick, terribly sorry, terribly sorry about Wait, the butter dishes. Shoes. Oh. You can come on our next album. <laughs> First, tell me about the guitar you were playing in the segment. There was a very special guitar. It is a very special guitar. I, it was in Captain Matchbox Whoopie Band when I was playing in that, and Dave, who was playing in the band, Dave Hubbard, sold it to me. And uh, it, well, he didn't know, and I didn't know, it's actually an extremely rare guitar. It's made out of, instead of being steel guitar, it's actually mm. made out of brass. And that was Dave we saw singing in the little... That's right, yeah. There. Yeah? Now, Mick, your collection is a bit different from some people's because you actually work with your collection, don't you? You use it to make your living. Well, that's right. That's the difference, yeah. Mine's a working collection. It's what it is. It's Fantastic. So I, I use them all the time, and I love introducing all those old, corny, old kind of things into a new audience who have never seen it before. I was going to say, is it hard to find the items, but do they find you instead? They do find me, yeah. Um, all kinds of instruments and oddball things that people think, you know, Mick will love that, Mick will love that, <laughs> and they just get it to me, it's just great. Mick, if I had to assign your collection to one of the collecting genres, it would be the cheesy, wacky, jokey... You <laughs> oddball. Know, oddball. <laughs> when you go to schools, do the kids like it? Uh, they love it, yeah. Uh, often I uh, work in schools, uh, high schools and primaries and also concerts and festivals. And I do a show about you know, life before television and people go, what, was it? <laughs> and, you know, and you're using all these kind of old vaudeville and theatre forms that, uh, that don't, uh, don't have any of that uh, technology at all. And it actually is a form that a lot of the kids aren't familiar with. Mm. 
Um, so it, uh, it really helps, yeah. I would think that'd be quite refreshing. I mean, they're so involved in their iPods and their high-tech stuff. It must be something completely different for them, isn't Yeah, it? I've had some, you know, so-called, you know, really tough audiences. And this guy comes out, you know, with a little silk like this and suddenly it turns into something like that and they go, <laughs> oh, what happened, you know? <laughs> what do you say to people who tell us that you can never find anything in an op shop anymore? Well, if you look hard enough and you're not looking for, you know, what the other collectors are, you can find plenty. How and about butter it. dishes? Do you, you <laughs> <know>? <laughs> butter dishes was a real problem. But uh, see, your things aren't tied to a particular era either because you've managed to find some wacky skateboard mm -hmm. stuff there. Do you think this kind of wackiness will just go on and on? Or? Yeah, I think people really do like humour, but that, those, those things are quite macabre. I mean, yeah, they were banned. There, were, there was uproar in Parliament in New was South really? Wales, and I Gosh. rushed out to the milk bars and went and bought <laughs> these you know, bad taste toys because I thought, oh, I've got to get these before they go. And sure enough, they were gone within a few days. Really? Does bad taste ever go out of fashion, or are we always going to have bad taste? <laughs> I think we always have bad taste. I mean, yes. look at Gordon's shirt. Yeah, I was, <laughs> was going to say, well, look at, at the stuff Adrian collects, for God's sake. You know. Look, before we let you go, I've got to ask you about the album cover. This is a Lunig picture on the front. Yeah, uh, that actually won an award. He thought about it and he said, I don't want to do a cover like it's ever done before. He said, I just want to do something completely different. And he did. It's a fantastic cover. It is. It's great. Look, thanks so much for coming in and showing us around your collection at home as well. So much fun. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Thanks.